Hello chess lovers, uh, welcome to the new video. We are going to be looking at the game from FIDE World Cup 2021 uh, between Andersen and Salinas from round one. So in this game I don't want to talk much about the opening so I'm gonna quickly go through the opening moves at, until, at least until a certain position because I would like uh, to show you a wonderful attack uh, from the title of this video Knight's Tango. So let's see how did uh, the Knights uh, dance in this game. So this setup chosen by White can be achieved uh, via many uh, different move orders so that's its advantage and White can have many plans as can Black. So both of them have a lot of options and uh, let's just move on so obviously a uh, black is preparing one of uh, these breaks this is his way of establishing equality uh, so these are some prep preparatory moves and uh, white needs to be careful if uh, this kind of thing happens then uh, the bishop and the knight and the queen and these guys sometimes uh, they can be very dangerous against uh, the white king but okay so black achieved c5 the mentioned break one of the mentioned breaks and we have cd5 ed5 and now um, a logical way to play would be to capture on c5 and after uh, black recaptures uh, to transfer this knight uh, sorry uh, to the king side from where it could join the action for example like this and uh, black has uh, these hanging pawns which are sometimes a weakness sometimes a strength not clear what is it here the position would be balanced but uh, white chose an ambitious ambitious plan he played g3 why is this ambitious so he wants with his bishop from here or here to influence uh, the central part of the board but this is a little bit dangerous because there is a light square complex around the king that is somewhat weakened and after rook c8 he continued ambitiously with bishop h3 a more modest approach would be bishop g2 to cover the king and the light squares but okay he made a pin makes sense but a little bit dangerous now we had cd4 knight d4 and bishop b4 and now we can see the problem the problem is that this rook is exerting pressure along the c file so moves like knight e4 could be a threat already with pressure on the c3 knight not easy to defend that's why a move like f3 would make sense to control this square and stop the knight from intrusion but uh, White decided to overprotect this knight by playing uh, here knight d e2, and this move, this move is just uh, I don't know. It's anti-positional move that plays into the typical attacking ideas uh, by Black. Uh, so, for example, this pawn was blocked. Yeah. When the knight was on d4, it was blocked. And when this pawn is blocked, this bishop is blocked. But now, there is no piece here, so black might consider pushing this pawn and opening up this bishop and eventually getting to this king. Let's see. First, he jumped in, knight e4, attacking c3 square one more time. And here, a white wanted to chase the bishop but now I suggest you pause the video and try to find a brilliant start of a wonderful combination so I guess you did that the move is knight f2 so we don't care about the bishop we offer another piece if that knight is taken then we can enter through this square queen e3 check let's say king g2 d4 do you remember i said uh, because there is no blockade the pawn can open the bishop 
uh, check, king f1, queen f3, king g1, queen h1, queen f2, queen h2, check, and this is a forced checkmate in a few moves. Okay, so white did not capture uh, the knight, but he chose to capture the bishop. It's not much better, because now this guy is left undefended. After knight h3, he played king f1. Some of you might wonder, what if the white king attacked the knight? That looks good. Let's see. King g2, again, we have the same idea, opening the bishop. d4 check, check to the king. You take the knight, and then the game is over. Queen e6, king h4, and this is a forced checkmate. All right, so I suggest you analyze this a little bit. Very uh, nice variations um, and a way of conducting an attack. Uh, so white went to f1, and now queen came to e3. There is a simple but obvious and strong threat of queen f2 checkmate. So uh, white decided to defend. He defended with his queen and also attacked the knight. But black doesn't care, as I said, he is playing the tango. So he brought his other knight into the attack, intending here. Let's see, if you take this knight, uh, queen h3, then you don't control this square. So, queen f3 check is possible, king g1, knight g4, attacking here, making threats like these possible. And let's say you come to defense, queen g2, well, then we just give you a check, and after king f1, again opening up this bishop. If you take the bishop, that's called a deflection. Queen f2 is checkmate. Okay, so you cannot take this knight, and this queen is annoying. There is a threat of rook e5, there is a threat of knight g4. So, white played bishop c1, attacking the queen. Did black move his queen? No, oh, the title of this video is Knight's Tango. So, the tights kept on dancing. Knight g4, what a move. So, queen was attacked and he put another piece on an undefended square. Let's analyze. If the queen is captured, then this knight uh, captures the bishop. And that's a checkmate, my dear chess lovers. That's a checkmate. No free squares. Okay, how about taking this knight? If you capture the knight, then again, you don't control f2, so queen f2 with the support of this knight is a checkmate. So, white attack the queen one more time. Now, he can capture, because if you recapture, we can re-recapture. But black doesn't care. Now, the mentioned move many times in many variations, opening up this bishop, and that helps in providing checkmating threats. For example, if white captures, this doesn't work, but this works. Knight h2, checkmate, again, all the squares are taken. So, he couldn't do that, so he wanted to make a free square. So he moved the rook, opened up the e1 square, so that the king can run. But this rook can control that square through all these pieces. Let's see how. Queen g1, a queen sacrifice, and after knight g1, uh, the rook opened up, controlling these squares. So knight h2, this was the final position of the knight's tango. Take notice of this rook and this bishop, how they cut across. And of course, uh, these knights, they also do their job. So, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this wonderful attack from the first round of FIDE World Cup. <clears throat> More games to come. Uh, if you like the content, please do subscribe, comment, share, and like. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye!